Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, let's look here. Rule number one, rule number two, rule number three, rule number four. After all the derivation and everything that we've done, only four. I'm going to add one more. This polar equation that we started with last time, and we said it's going to follow the parabola. You don't really need to memorize it. Once you know the parabola, r equal 2p, you only need to know that you have to add. There is no 2p here because there's no focal distance between the focus and the vertex. There's something different here that we're going to add, the k. You need, and you need to know that you, know, you have to add the e because the e is not equal to 1 here. So we'll get to that in a second. But so far, we have 4. We're going to add one more. And this, uh, instead of the 2p, uh, divided by 1 uh, plus or minus cosine theta, I'll give you another way of how to not really memorize it, but, you know, conceptualize it so you don't need to really memorize and memorize and memorize. All right, let's go back to the board. I want to show you how is everything related. Um, I already drew it here for you. How everything is related to the parabola. Okay, so if I have an ellipse and this is my foci or the focus in, in uh, our, my focus of interest, I'm interested in studying this one and what's going on on a point that is close to this one right here, this P. Oh, you told me, sir, in the parabolas, we use the acute. They're better in the calculation. We can use an obtuse one. Yes. Why don't we use an obtuse one here? Because it's a closed shape. We're going to do that in a second after this. And I'm, I'm going to show you why we need to follow the parabola and not, you know, oh, let me take P here. And now I have an obtuse for an obtuse angle. And let me do the calculation. This is going to throw you off because the original concept is a parabola that has an E. Remember this E tells you uh, how uncircular a shape is, how much it deviates from being a line, which E goes to infinity, or a circle, E equals zero. So by following through and continuing and getting the second focus, I draw my ellipse and I close that shape and I make that E smaller and smaller and I make it bigger when I open the parabola more I flatten it up more and I make it a hyperbola all the way then to a line where e eccentricity you know uh, uh, approaches infinity okay so now I always start with e that's why you don't need to memorize these um, you know uh, James was asking me e equal to p divided by 1 there's an E here, equal 1 in the case of parabolas. 1 plus or minus cosine theta. There's an E here that equals to 1. Remember, in order to get to this, we didn't even need to memorize it. We just started with E equal PF divided by PM. That's it. That's why when I say you only have 4 to memorize so far, you have 4. This is this. These forms, we got them from this. E equal PF divided by PM and E equal PF divided by PM. It's at the essence of, a, of the definition of what a parabola is. This moving point P or Q or whatever it is. And its distance from a fixed point, which is the focus to a fixed line. Shortest distance perpendicular to a directrix is equal. That's your E. And in this situation, in the parabola E is 1. Here... E equal PF divided by PM. PF is your R. PM now. PM is the same as WN. Okay. Yeah, I agree. But that WN equals what? Equal FN. This K, we call this K and the FN, the distance from the new origin. The focus in consideration. The focus at the origin. This focus is zero, zero now. This is the zero, zero or the HK in the case of what? In the case of a Cartesian coordinate, that gives us what? That gives us this directrix at X equal plus A divided by E. Now, when, I'm, when this is my focus of interest, this is the focus at the pole. This is F00 in a polar grid with concentric circles. So between F and N, I have a K minus this R cosine theta. 
horizontal, remember, we don't need the r sine theta here. We only need the r cosine theta, okay? Now, cross multiplication, I put it ek minus er times cosine theta equal r. I take r to this side equal ek. Look, it's very similar, but there's no 2p here, of course, because there's no p. Equal r equal e k divided by 1 plus e cosine theta. And this is very in line with what? This is very in line with a parabola starting here and opening leftward with one focus here. And then I can keep drawing my ellipse. Because I this point is in, you know, this is the focus I need. This is a parabola opening leftward. My focus at the pole is this one. So I have when a parabola open leftward exactly, we go by r equal 2p1 plus cosine theta. Look here, what did I find? This ellipse has r equal e times k1 plus e cos plus e times cosine theta. Okay? Now what is the k? The k is the rule number five that you need to memorize. This k distance, which is not the distance from the Cartesian center 0, 0 to the directrix, which is pl plus or minus a divided by e. No, it's the distance from the pole, focus at the pole, that in, uh, uh, the focus that is into consideration in this particular problem that you are given to the directrix equals this big large a divided by e. Okay, minus what? Minus this OF. What's OF? It's C. It's AE. So if I take, you know, A minus, I take, you know, uh, the same, I do times E on the, on the, on the numerator, and I, then I factor out A equals A1 minus E squared divided by E. But E is what? It's C divided by A. So equals a squared, 1 minus e squared divided by c. I moved this a up here. That's all I did. See it? Yeah. So a squared divided by c. Because in your books, you see it like this. Equals a squared minus a squared e squared, which is c squared, divided by c. You see k equals a squared minus c squared divided by c, which is what? Which is b squared divided by c? What is b? This is b. The squish. We go back to the squish. So I remember it by, it's the squish squared divided by c. By the focal, uh, the coordinate of f uh, from the origin in the rectangular uh, Cartesian grid. Okay? So this is rule number five. I don't memorize it. But if you don't want to go through that, just remember, it's the squish squared divided by c, okay? In most books, it goes, in some books, it goes like this. In some, most books, it's a squared minus c squared divided by c. That's b squared, okay? Now, let's go and show you, you know, when I was dealing with these 30 years ago, 30 yeah, not, not yet. I'm not that old. Um, I thought about this obtuse angle. You know why? It's a closed shape. Why don't I use the obtuse angle? I'm going to just go with you for a few minutes. We don't want to waste the time. And I'm going to show you why. Look at this. Let's say I have this same... Here. Let's say I have this same setup. So I have the this focus point of the ellipse, and this is the other one, and I am. This is the focus point of interest, and I have the ellipse going like this. So if the parabola started here, so I should end up with r equal, like we did on the board, right? Uh, e times k divided by opening leftward one plus e cosine theta. Let's see what we get if we consider the obtuse angle, okay? And let's say this is my. Uh, directrix and I don't want to take p here I want to take p here okay so this is focus at the pole so I have an obtuse angle now and I go with it okay so the reference angle to this is what 
is p minus theta, right? I have theta obtuse, reference angle is p minus theta. So my pf, this is my pf and pm here. Okay. PF over PM e equal PF divided by PM, right? Equals R divided by what? K. This is K now. Now I'm here. Look, I have this K. This is K plus this. Look at that, right? Plus what? Minus R because this is zero now. Minus R cosine of what? Of this cosine here. Cosine of pi minus theta. Okay. So if I am to keep going, I keep going E equal R K minus R. What is cosine of pi minus theta? Minus cosine theta. Exactly. It's quadrant two. So that's minus R times minus cosine theta. So I get R divided by K plus R cosine theta. But is that what I want? Not really. Look at that. If I do my cross multiplication, what do I end up with? I end up with R equal E times K one minus E cosine theta. And this is opening leftward. I should have gotten what? E times K one plus E cosine theta. So yes, some angles could be obtuse, but this is a little bit advanced. Let's stick to the parabola because you start, just think of it as I start uh, sketching an ellipse by the first focus. And if the first focus is here, that means the parabola, the original parabola is opening leftward. That means I need to get a plus in my E cosine theta, one plus E cosine theta here in the denominator. If it's opening, if this is the focus of interest, if it's opening rightward, then I'm going to get one minus E cosine theta here in the denominator. Okay. But it could be obtuse. That's a bit advanced. Let's keep that on the side for now. We don't want to, you know, confuse anybody. We just want to follow the parabola for now. And we just added what? We added this one. Let's do it again. We added this. K, the distance between F, the focus at the pole, 0, 0, and N, the directrix, equals A divided by E minus AE, which is C, right? And if I am to do this, A minus AE squared divided by E, I get what? I get A1 minus E squared divided by E, right? And then I can rewrite this as equals uh, A1 minus E squared divided. Instead of E, I put C divided by A, and then I move A to the top, and I get A squared, 1 minus E2 divided by C, right? In most... I don't memorize it. If you want to go ahead and memorize it, it's up to you. So, and I get a squared minus a squared e squared uh, divided by what? By c. So this is a squared minus c squared divided by c. This is b squared divided by c. Okay. So that's rule number five. If you are, if you want to memorize it, a squared minus c squared divided by c. If you don't have the b, so it's a squared minus c squared actually divided by. A. Now, if we are dealing with a vertical stretch if of an uh, ellipse, ellipse stretched vertically, okay? All we need to do again, you know, is to look at the parabola that started that ellipse that we, the focus point, is it the lower foci we're interested in or the upper foci? What do I mean by this? Look, if it's the lower foci or if it's the upper foci, if it's the lower foci, that means the parabola is opening upward. If it's the upper foci, that means the parabola is opening downward. As simple as that. Okay, let me give you an example. And let's actually, let's do it here. We can erase that stuff. We're done with it. And let's, um, we can keep this one if you want to copy it down, how we derive this k this new element 
the distance between the focus at the pole, the new zero zero, and the concentric circle in the polar grid, and your directrix, which didn't change. We'll keep that for you. And we can do this here, okay? So if we are, if this is the right here, and this is zero, this is, let's say, this is F prime, this is F. I keep drawing the ellipse like this, you see it? Okay, so if this is the focus, the lower foci is your zero, zero, that means this is the new origin. That means the parabola is the one the, into consideration. This is how we started drawing and sketching this ellipse is the one opening upward. The, the one opening upward for the parabola are equal what? 2p divided by opening upward minus one minus sine theta. So if, if that's the case, can I prove it? So this is the directrix that I into consideration. It's not the one on top, okay? So what do I do here? Look, if you take a point, you know, with a, let's say like this, always I keep it acute. So you take a point P, this is your PF prime, right? and it's smaller than your PM, makes a lot of sense, right? This is your PM, this is your N if you need it, okay? So what is PF divided by PF prime divided by PM? PF prime equals R divided by what? By PM, PM equal what? Equal this, which is what? What is that? The distance between the focus and the directrix. Okay, this new element, this a squared minus c squared divided by c, this new element. So it equals k plus what? R sine theta. R sine theta. Now, if you do your cross multiplication, this plus is going to turn into a minus, and this is e equal. You get r equal at the end what? Okay, here, let me do it for you. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this equals cross multiplication ek plus e times r times sine theta equal r. So I bring the r's together, I get r, 1 minus e sine theta now equals what? Equals ek. So r equals e times k divided by 1 minus e sine theta. And that's because the lower foci the lower one is the one into consideration. The lower one is the focus at the pole, the new origin, okay? So we have to deal with this directrix and everything works out. The angle is acute, K is, you know, into the calculation. We put K into the calculation. We got the lower foci, you know, and we started with that parabola opening upward, okay? Now, if it's the other way around, it's gonna, you know, be, plus in the denominator and we'll prove it okay so if it is the other way around all we need to do here before we start an example um let's do the other way around if it's opening like this here if it's opening this way So if that's the F, this is your zero, zero. Then this is the directrix, right? And in this situation, you know, you take an angle here. And this is your P, this is your F or F prime. And this is your M. So in this situation, E is, R is gonna equal to R, K, minus k, this k, this is k right here, this the whole thing is k, k minus this, what is that? r sine theta, minus r sine theta. No? Okay. Board then, my, actually it's my, <laughs> it's my favorite tool, you know that. Okay, so here, look.
Hmm. Look at that. So, this is the full side. This is the zero, zero, not this one now, okay? And this is the origin, whatever you want to call it. So it goes like this. This is your K from here to here. Look at that. This is the K, the distance between the F, the foci hooks at the pole and the directrix. You take a point P here, and this is your M, this is your N, if you need that W here, okay? So P equal PF divided by PM, right? And PF is always, this is angle theta, it's an, an acute angle, equals R divided by PM. PM is what? It's K minus what? R sine theta, this here, right here. Because look, if I go like this, this is my R sine theta, and it's parallel to this. This is what you didn't get. So this is R sine theta, and this is R sine theta. So I get, you know what, K minus R sine theta, okay? And then you do your plus multiplication. Since it's a minus here, it's, we're gonna get a plus. And what's the equation of a parabola polar equation opening downward? It's 2P1 plus sine theta. So here you get with the ellipse, with the upper foci into consideration, meaning we started with a parabola opening downward. We get an R equal E times K, right? 1 plus E sine theta. E times K, we need their E here because E is not 1. And K is formula number 5, A squared minus C squared. Again, you can sketch that, do it in 15 seconds, 20 seconds. You don't need to memorize it. If you want to memorize it, it's up to you. Okay? Now, let's move into um, an example with numbers, actual numbers and values. Um, so we won't just be talking rules and rules and... Um, Let's see what I have here. I have a lengthy one. Yeah, we have time for that, and that's gonna... Okay, so if we are... Let's start with this one. So, x... What do I have here? x2 divided by 3. So I have h. There's no minus h. It's 0. Plus, okay, that's the first uh, thing that I noticed y plus 1, there is a k, what's the k? Minus 1, not plus 1, okay? Equal 4. And there is one more thing that I noticed. It's a plus, I'm dealing with an ellipse, but look at that. The quantity under x2 is less than the quantity under y2, so it's a vertical stretch, exactly. So I always want my b less than a. I don't want to memorize any more rules, so I make this my a, and a squared, I'm sorry, and this is my b squared. So uh, if b squared is, so b is squared equal 3, so b equal what? Square root of 3. But my b squared is 3. a squared is what? If I need it, it's 4. And a is going to equal to 2a equal plus or minus 2 when I need it. Okay, let's keep that now here. What, do I, what can I get after that? I can get my c, right? c squared equal... 4 minus a squared minus b squared. 4 minus 3 equals 1, right? So, so c squared equal 1. c is going to equal plus or minus 1. To find the e, c equal a times e, right? So e equals what? 1 divided, which is what? Which is c. 1 divided by a, which is 2. So I have eccentricity now. Interesting. What is in the polar form? In the polar form, you need the eccentricity now because it's not equal to 1. Remember, R equal what? It's vertical. But I still don't know where is the focus at the pole, which, whether it's the lower foci or the upper foci. I will know that from my... Uh, uh, plotting from from graphing the and understanding which one is at the pole so uh, it's in the form r equal e times k right one plus or minus i don't know yet 
e sine theta. We all agree on this, okay? Because it's, you know, opening upward or downward. We are considering either the lower foci or the upper foci. I already have e, e equal one divided by two. And I have what? Do you have k? Yes, you have k. How, how, yes, it's easy to calculate k, it's not difficult. k equals what? k equal, remember, a squared minus c squared, so that's why, 4 minus 1 divided by c, which is 1. So it's equal 3, or it's equal b squared divided by c, which is 3 divided by 1. So I have e and I have k. You tell me, then you're done. Yes, you're done. But do you know which foci, whether it's plus or minus? So you can go ahead now and write r equal e, which is what? A half, okay, times 3, which is the k, 1 plus or minus e, which is what? A half sine theta. I'm done, sir. No, you're not done. Look at that. And that's why, you know, you need to be very careful, you know, of this link to the parabola. Okay, so how do I link it? You link it by finding which f is at zero, zero. If you know which f is at zero, zero, is it the upper foci or the lower foci, then you've solved it. So basically, in order for you to know which f is at the zero, zero, what do you do? Yes, so basically your f1 is where? F1 is at, that means the lower one. It's at zero minus two. Where is F in general? F is at zero, any F, the lower or the upper one, they are at zero because, you know, it's the ver there's a vertical change, right? So, and AE, which is C, right? Plus K, what's K minus one? So one of the f's is going to be 0 and it's going to be what? 1 plus k, which is 1 minus 1, because c is 1. And the other one is going to be what? 0 minus 1 minus k minus 1. It's going to be at f 0 minus 2. So this one is the 0, 0. So you have 1 at 0, 0. And then you have what? You have your origin. Where is your origin? The old origin. Okay, you are confused. Yeah. It's... The confusion, I believe, is because, you know, we're linking two different worlds, right? We're linking um, this here. Let's go to the board and let's try to draw it. So we all, we already figured out what E is. We already figured out what K is, but we don't know whether we're gonna put plus or minus. In order to figure that out, we need to understand, is it the lower foci that is into place, into consideration, or the upper foci? In order to find that out, we need to find F. The two Fs, F1, F2, or F, F prime, doesn't matter. So F is what? Since it's moving this way, vertical, the X is zero. And the y is ae plus this k, or minus ae, which is c. Same thing here, okay? Plus k. So c, or ae, is 1. Remember, a equals 2 and e equals 1 half. So c is 1, and we already got c is 1. So I have f at 0, and what? 0 and 1 plus k minus 1. So at zero, zero, this is my, the one that I need. And I have the other one, F at zero, what? Minus one, mi minus AE now, the one underneath, minus C, minus AE, minus one. So I have it like this, at zero minus two. So if I am to draw this, how do I draw it? You imagine that you are, you know, in the Cartesian world, but you're not really in the Cartesian world. So where is your, your original 